My name is George Higgs. As a composer, I am entirely responsible for approximately 28 hours of music. As a father, I am precisely half responsible for exactly three children. The photo you see here is of the Kremlin Chamber Orchestra playing my work, The Famine Dance, in Carnegie Hall, New York City. However, I don't really feel at home in concert halls, and thus have spent my short, happy life searching for unexpected ways to connect with an audience through music. This is Storm in a Teacup, where audience members listened to a composition of mine through teacups. This is a scene of the singers in my wordless opera, Hong Gong Galangalo. In the piece, I tried as much as possible to create drama directly from the making of music with as little extra musical theater as possible. This photo is from an outdoor performance in the Fatima Mansion flats on the eve of their destruction. I built a scale model of the flats in the form of a hammer dulcimer. The building served as the bridges for the strings. Recordings of the residents came from speakers embedded in the instrument. Here I am playing the instrument with the residents watching. These buckets were weighted with rubble from other flats which had been torn down. This weight served as the tension on the dulcimer strings. This image is taken from a performance called The Brass Picnic. 16 audience members met 16 different brass players and 16 waiters in 16 different spots in the city center to hear a mobile composition I'd written for large brass ensemble. The electroacoustic exchange was based on a study of commodity values. Eight speakers were suspended from the ceiling in pairs. In each speaker, commodities were placed which would vibrate percussively from infrasonic pulses sent through them, all created from economic rhythms Bed of Macbeth was an installation in the project in the following year where I built a bed which had vibrating and audio speakers. I created five pieces of music cinema which the audience would watch on the canopy above while lying in bed. Music for Modern Animals was a piece I created in 2009 for Airfield Trust. Three musical machines sit on the lawn outdoors. People turn a crank on the front and listen to three different pieces written for Telegraph Ensemble and Livestock Orchestra. In all my work, I look for one thing only, a way to connect with people through music in an unexpected manner. Everything I do is a bit of an experiment and involves some kind of performance risk. The Evolvophone, which is currently on exhibit downstairs in the Science Gallery, generates a composition from two people's initials according to the laws of natural selection. In the booth, people are asked to state their initials into a mouthpiece and enter their initials using a telegraph key. This information is used to create a musical identity for each person. Each initial is represented by its sonic Morse code equivalent of dots and dashes. For example, my initials, GCH, are represented as this. that if I had two people enter their initials into a bell jar display, these initials could be recombined in the same way that genetic information is in sexual reproduction. For example, my wife's initials and mine could have the following permutations. An algorithm I devised in Pure Data performed the recombination as well as creating a fitness function based on the timbral qualities of each person's voice, which would determine survival. Those organisms that survive pass on their sonic code to the next generation. In the booth, sounds are represented orally through audio speakers, through vibrating speakers in the seats, and visually through speakers with vibrating P's in them, representing Mendel's contributions to the understanding of genetics. The project was made possible by the Wellcome Trust, the Arts Council, the Science Gallery, Charles Darwin, Sinead Cusack, and the supervision of the incomparable Dr. Aoife McLeisett, seen here in the picture before you. My work reminds me of the constant risks in life and art, musically or genetically. You never know what will come of your efforts or how they'll be judged. Whatever the case may be, for better or for worse, they're all your children. Sometimes you get extremely lucky.